Hello Makers! Welcome to 3D Maker Noob! I'm Joe, and today we're going to talk about the upgrades I have done so far on the ANET A8. Stick around! Welcome back Makers! As promised, I will document the journey with the ANET A8 and all the upgrades I do to it. I've now had it for a couple of weeks and as you can see it's starting to look a little bit different than uh, it did when I did the live build. I want to point out before I start that most of the upgrades didn't cost absolutely anything except for the filament that I used for it. The only money I have spent so far on it as it stands right now here on the table are two external MOSFETs which in total cost me about 15 euros and a couple of bearings which I had lying around, which usually cost a couple of bucks. I have also stuck on it a Biltech type sheet, which I had as an extra from the Duplicator i3 Plus. While it looks very wrong on many levels, it does the trick. I was simply just fed up of picking masking tape off parts. I also want to point out that any upgrades I have printed for the printer itself were done with the ANET just to make sure that if you do buy this printer as your first printer kit, you would be able to print the upgraded parts that I am doing uh, a review of today. Now, during the live build, I did print a Chinese chess piece, which was included in the SD card. I had some rigid ink PLA in orange, um, so I decided to print it off during the live stream. I wasn't really happy with the print quality, but seeing as it was a live build, I do tend to not pay full attention on the build, so I might miss a few steps here and there. And sometimes I might miss tightening a few screws or not install a few parts as well as I should. So after the live build, I went through all the nuts and bolts, tightened everything, made sure that both lead screws were aligned, and also made sure that the linear rods on the bed were secured and no wobble was present. Once done, I reran the G-code on, uh, on the supplied memory card of the chess piece and the results were much better. Still not as good as I would have liked it to be, but good enough. Knowing that the pre-sliced G-codes on supplied memory cards are usually nothing to trust due to the difference in materials that you might use, I decided to rerun the chess piece through Simplify 3D. Now Simplify 3D actually has a profile in it for the ANET A8. So I re-sliced it and I went for it. Third time much more improved version than the second one, showing a lot of less Z-banding and under extrusion. So um, once that was done and I was fairly happy with that, I decided to print Benchy as I always like to have a complicated print, which I can then compare with any changes I make to the printer. This is the results and I have to say quite good. Not perfect, but keep in mind I had done nothing to the printer just yet. So all I did was just change some slicer settings and made sure that it was installed correctly. So for all intents and purposes, this printer can actually print quite well with no upgraded parts. So once all the uh, test prints were out of the way, I started printing upgraded parts. The most important parts that I printed first were structural. I printed the anti-wobble attachments here on the lead screws and the um, linear rods for the Z-axis. And I just inserted the bearings to make sure they fit. The, the fit wasn't perfect, but it did the job good enough. I did install them upside down in order for uh, the ball bearings not to just fall out, just in case there were some, um, some vibrations or stuff like that but they will be eventually changed to a completely different Z-axis bracket up here, as I do not want to reduce the uh, print volume of the printer itself. I then printed some reinforcement pieces for the frame, just to make it a bit more rigid and have less wobble. Those fit perfectly. So once those were done, 
I wanted to do a bit of an enlarged test print. I went to my mini factory and I downloaded the Wreck-It Ralph model, sliced it and printed it. Results? Quite impressive, I have to say. The only issue I saw was some slight under extrusion in a couple of spots and some very, very fine Zia banding. But other than that, I really think this was an impressive little print, um, which means there, are loads, there is a quite a lot of potential on this printer. So once that test print was done, I decided to move on to printing more upgrade parts. And as you can see in front of you, there's quite a bit of them. The first thing I did after the structural parts was as suggested by many actually, and that was to take off the heat bed, unsolder the connector and resolder the wires directly to the heat bed. The main reason for this is due to the fact that most fire related issues I have come across online seem to be attributed either to the heat bed connector on the bed itself or the hot end connector to the main board because apparently they aren't secure enough and the slack starts sparks which heat up the plastic, melts it and it just goes downhill from there. Once I soldered the wires directly to the heat bed, I turned it 90 degrees anti-clockwise in order to be able to use the Y-axis cable chain that I printed. Apart from that, I also printed a cable chain and brackets for the X-axis uh, travel of the extruder. I also printed a cover for the two MOSFETs and a cover for the mainboard. Finally, I just printed a um, filament guide which sits on top of the printer, which I will probably change because I'm, to be honest, I don't really like it that much. <laughs> it still doesn't look clean due to the fact that I still have more to uh, do to it. And it's useless tidying it up now when I have to take it apart again and re-add and take part again, and it's gonna take some time. So that is all I have installed so far. Granted that most of it is just aesthetics, however, I will be doing much more to this printer and will do so with the least amount of cost as possible. I have printed a cover for the power supply, which is right here. This will house a power switch, something that I believe is extremely essential. But I haven't installed it yet as I have ordered a 30 watt power supply instead of the 20 watt one that comes with it. And that is why I have only wired one of the MOSFETs and that is for the heat bed. The hot end will come at a later stage, but only once the PSU comes. I have also ordered a few more parts, which I am not entirely sure will go on this particular printer, but they were inexpensive and shouldn't break the bank. Those are a Titan extruder from E3D with a new stepper motor, which cost like 30 euro. And I also ordered a Ramps 1.4 kit, a complete kit with, um, with relay switches, sorry, with, um, with limit switches and all the electronics, cables, the screen, everything. And that costs like 35 euros, something like that from Amazon. I have also ordered a couple of remote relay switches and I do have a Raspberry Pi 3 available here. Now the Pi and the relays would give me the ability to monitor the printer if I am away and also the ability to kill the power remotely should something go horribly wrong. Now I do understand that all of this sounds a bit overkill and it's taking the printer to a whole level of different budget. However, these are things you can slowly do and not all in one go. Ultimately, this is the fun part of the Prusa concept. You can tinker and constantly upgrade the machine. And to be honest, I would also be happy buying a Prusa i3 steel frame, which costs about 60 euro from a Spanish company. And that would probably make it one of the most rigid Prusa style printers on the market. But not just yet. For now, this is actually all I will do to the printer. Um, and the reason for that is 
I will be putting the ANET A6 together and do a full comparison between the two of them. Once that's done, then I crack on to upgrading the ANET A8 to, well, to my heart's content. That is it for me today, guys. I will do a tutorial shortly on how to wire the MOSFETs uh, because it was requested a couple of times. I will also do uh, the calibration episode of the X, Y, and Z for those who are interested. Let me know in the comments. However, it will take some time. It's getting a bit busy here um, and I'm not complaining. I'm absolutely loving it. It's just a bit difficult to juggle everything at the same time. So everything will take a bit of time, but I will try to push out as many episodes as I possibly can. This printer, however, is here for the long haul. Um, being so popular, I don't want to rush it and I want to make sure that I have all the information available to me before I, um, I send out a complete review. And one month is definitely not enough for this printer, especially with all the possible risks involved. So it'll need quite a few months. Thanks again for watching guys. Hope you enjoy this episode. Uh, please comment on the, um, on the video if you have any further suggestions for upgrades. As always, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. And in the meantime, as always, happy making, guys.